going on guys? Gonna do a little live action here. Let a couple people roll through. Hope everybody's doing great. Thanks for everybody for stopping in. It's been a while since I've done a Q&A and uh, we'll definitely get some uh, <clears throat> some questions going. Maddie, what's happening my brother? I've been getting a lot of business questions both on Twitter and on Instagram, which is like, it's kind of like, uh, it's like, man, a lot, lot of business questions and I keep want keep wanting to answer that. You know, you got to be a great coach. <clears throat> you can't, uh, you can't think that like some sort of marketing or some crazy business tip is going to change the trajectory of your business. It's not. Every time my gym has gotten referrals, has it's happened because of word of mouth, or we simply have you know a pretty solid referral system put in, but nobody wants to refer um, anybody to you unless you're doing a great job. So uh, let's see what questions you guys got. <clears throat> I'll definitely uh, answer. <clears throat> and you know, I'll just say this because this is about work ethic, so I'm okay with this. When people tell me they don't have time, you know, to write articles, make videos, put up um, Instagram videos, all these things, um, <clears throat> let me take you back to when I was first starting. You know, when I started training a couple of athletes out of my parents' garage and backyard, um, I was already I already built a website. I learned how to build a website on my own, which was certainly not as easy as it as it is nowadays. Um, I was taking photos with a digital camera that was the size of a brick, literally. And I didn't know how to change the resolution on it, so I think I was able to take something like four, five, six photos, had a little memory card, and then I'd have to upload them. I had to figure out how to upload everything to a desktop. I did not have a laptop. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, my phone back then was a phone with an antenna, so you didn't have the ability to take photos, you know, people didn't even text message back then. So I was writing articles on the regular, not just for myself creating my own website, but for a local newspaper, for the local wrestling newspaper, USA Wrestler, the New Jersey chapter. Um, I was writing articles and doing interviews with any and every website that was dealing with combat athletes from jujitsu to wrestling to martial arts. And even, you know, as a teacher, I remember uh, Dave Tate telling me that I had the most articles on Elite FTS only behind Dave and Jim Wendler. And this was when I was a teacher, and uh, I don't even think I owned the first warehouse location at the time. So I was writing an article at least once a week for Elite FTS. So, you know, a lot of people tell me they don't want to build a website, they don't want to do this. Well, you know, if you want to spread the word out there, you got to be in a lot of places. That's, you know, the, that's the truth. And you've got to do a great job of putting information out there. There are times where I don't feel like doing Strong Life Tip of the Day, which is what inspires me to do the Strong Life Tip of the Day. Um, there are times where I'm like, man, I just want to train these kids. But I know that I got to get up a video. I got to get at least one video or one photo to share of what we did because one thing is 100% more than zero. That work ethic could be applied to your training, to your job, to your career, to you know whatever, wherever place and whatever direction you want to go in. And the reason why I harp on work ethic is um, I think a lot of people don't have it and a lot of people think they're better than what they are or they're too good for something. So <clears throat> basically the... Uh, you know, I, I always I always tell stories without obviously mentioning names, but I've had many, you know, aspiring interns and aspiring coaches tell me they'll come to the gym, they'll clean the gym, they'll clean and scrub the toilets, this and that. They just show up and take. They don't clean a bench. They don't do anything. The guy that's at least going to wipe down a bench shows me that he's got some you know, form of uh, intuition that, hey, I need to go above and beyond and show some gratitude. Uh, Maddie Vainshock here says, my girl, I went from three people in the garage to 119 members and a 7,200 square foot warehouse space. Word of mouth is king. That's amazing. Luke Niemeyer in the house. So um, the, you know, 
even my gym doesn't have over a hundred members, but um, if I would train adults in the mornings, that might change things. And uh, from a business standpoint, you know, I'm, there's there's so, some things that I'm considering doing. Like I spoke with Alan Thrall, and um, he basically has a key gym when he's not coaching, and it's not where he gives them a key. It's you know a um, it's like a software that's connected to the key, almost like a swipe. And uh, it's something that I'm certainly thinking of doing, and I see some people doing this, uh, putting in a little bit more of an investment in a bigger area, and basically creating, you know, these quote-unquote hardcore gyms, because I think there's a lot of people that have done CrossFit that got tired of doing high reps of Olympic lifts and feeling injured. Um, I've met too many people getting beat up from the wrong kind of training, whether it's their own training or going to another place. And uh, I like that idea. I definitely like that idea. So <clears throat> that's what we do. 24-hour 24 24 hour open gym paid for itself quickly. That's good, man. Uh, I want to hear more about that because I am certainly considering it. I don't think my location is going to um, – uh, it's not going to work for my location. Our doors don't even really work too hot. So I probably need a new location, and I'm, and I'm also reconsidering where we're located the big thing I consider is owning a piece of property, owning a building uh, versus paying rent. So you guys got to know, I've been paying rent on a location since 2007, June 2007. So we're going on 11 and a half years. That's a long time. Brett B. in the house. Oh, man. Let's get Brett B. in on the live video. How do we do this? Jumping in. Connecting. You guys hang tight. Brett. What's up? Are you on are you on exhaustion or like super hyper mode that your course is like finishing up the launch mode or what? Oh, yeah. I'm trying to dig into underground strength mode, man. My wife and I just moved, so hence the dim lighting. We're still moving into a new home. Where are you guys still in Georgia? Yeah, yeah, we're still in Atlanta. We just had to move. We just moved a little farther north. Had to get a bit, uh, a little bit different spot for the dogs. But following <laughs> everything you do, and I wanted to jump on here, man. I think you know. I think everything you do is you like you attack it with an energy that is unbelievable. And I could use some of that right now, yeah, because I am on exhaust after that course, man. Yeah. So I want to talk a little bit about your course. Is tonight the last night of their ability to uh, grab the course? Yeah, yeah. So if people go to artofcoaching.com, uh, you can learn everything you need to about the course. You know, I, I mean, you're somebody that I've followed for a long time. You've always put out so much about training and exercises and, and different things like that. And you have a passion for coaching, too. And you and I have talked about this, right? Like, but I don't feel like there were always a lot of resources out there about coaching. So, you know, I wanted to kind of bridge that gap so it could complement the work that folks like you and, and so many others in the industry do so that it's not just about the strength and conditioning, but the coaching piece too. It's actually harder than ever to connect with kids more than ever before. When I say kids, I'm talking really anybody, you know, because I looked at, um, I think you guys made like an infograph about like um, what would be, you know, the most powerful way to make this connection and develop that buy-in with, with athletes. And, and the one was like, uh, if you're authoritarian and kind of always telling them this is how it's done, you're not going to, you're really not going to get them to believe or trust the process about what it's about. And I was looking at that and I, it, I was looking at that infographic and I was like, man, when you're a coach, you need like multiple, you need your own multiple personalities to match the multiple personalities of all the different kinds of people that are out there. So um, when this is over, I'm going to try to get this out on YouTube to kind of spread that message because I think it applies to much deeper breadth than um, athletes. And I know you take that to – you've done stuff with corporations, yeah. Microsoft. So, you know, if we could give maybe two or three important crucial tips on how to make a connection with people, um, looking at – you know, if I would look at factors like – Somebody, a coach messaged me the other day. He's a private independent guy. And he said, um, he goes, man, it's hard to stand out with all the noise of orange theory and this and that. 
And um, so, you know, how could we, you know, looking at the art of coaching, apply some powerful tips, you know, two or three real powerful tips that you think are crucial to any kind of coach, whether they work with adults or the athlete type population? Yeah, I'll give you three right off the bat, you know, and I try to make it simple, like to, to memorize. I always just call it like there's three R's. If you research, relate and reframe, that helps you get on the right path. And what I mean by that is research, you know, let's say you're dealing with a crazy parent or a difficult coach or a difficult client, whatever. Like research just involves listening, like finding what matters most to them so that you understand the linchpin. Like people, people tell you how they want to be communicated with. You know, if you just listen to them and you and you kind of understand the way that they talk, the speed in which they talk, do they use a lot of analogies and metaphors? Do they try to use fancy terms? People will tell you everything you need to know in terms of the way they like to communicate. And if you just listen closely enough. So once you have an idea of what their concerns are, you know, what their goals are, what, you know, just kind of how they're feeling about certain things. I always think, you know, the next piece is then relating because people aren't going to give you a certain of inf- a certain amount of information beyond a point unless they know something about you too you know and that's what like they call in social psychology a parasocial relationship so if somebody's always blabbing on about themselves but they don't know anything about the other person right that's the parasocial relationship so you know we oftentimes try to get our athletes to open up other people to open up and and then we never tell them anything as a coach you know it doesn't have to be anything crazy like just tell them about when you were an athlete things that you struggled with tell them about you know, whatever coaching style you used. And I had a guy just recently, I said, hey, you know, I never reacted well when I had a coach who did X, Y, or Z. Are you the same way? Like, how do you like to be coached? You know, just ask him that question. And then finally is reframing. So once you have information that's important to them, they know a little bit more about you and you've kind of gotten on that same page and built rapport. Now it's about anything that you're trying to get them to do after that, you have to cast it in that same light. You know, and, and like whether that's weight loss for your general population client, whether <clears throat> running a faster 40 for a combine guy or whether that's getting a college scholarship for a gangly high school kid that doesn't want to eat anymore, you know? Yeah. And so, you know, um, what that reframing sounds like, Brett is, um, even re- recently, but especially the, you know, not long ago, I used to hear, uh, when I would run my certification a lot, coaches would say, well, the dad came and said his son needs to get uh, better first step quickness, faster 40, and I told him, no, you got to get stronger first. And I said, you know, you're starting off kind of arguing with the guy. Yeah. You know, the father doesn't understand that developing strength builds speed. And now you're telling him that he's wrong and he's going to go seek out somebody else who's going to reframe it um, and who could relate to him. Right. I, I totally. And we, like you said that perfectly, like we get so caught up, like trying to tell them what we know, like. Yeah. You know, when I was 16, I wanted a new car. And my dad was trying to tell me, like, don't buy, you don't buy a new car, right? Like, it just depreciates. And I'm like, no, I want a new car, you know? And, <laughs> like, you know, he had to help me understand, like, why it didn't benefit to buy a new car without going heavy into economics, you know? And so it's the same thing. Like, you got to get, these parents aren't reading these journals. They're not having the discussion we're having. Like, none of that's going on. So, like, just use the terminology you need to, to connect with them. Yes. You know, and when you're around your strength coach buddies, use the terminology that you guys relate to. Correct. Yes. I think that we're, uh, and I try to explain, even with all the information we're putting out, this Instagram, all these websites and all this stuff we put out, they're not reading that stuff. They're not, you know, no. I one time I, I was training kids and, you know, everything we did was, you know, this was out of the garage. So, they were training with free weights, kettlebells, tree logs. And then a dad told me, he's like, you know, I was explaining to this other dad that what you do is speed and agility. And when he said that, this is like two that I didn't even have the warehouse. So this is probably 05, 2005. And I'm thinking to myself, holy shit. He thinks that everything we're doing is speed and agility. So, you know, 13 years ago, you know, he, he heard some terms and they related to something. So what you're doing is so important because I think that if, you know, I, I try to, I'm not sure what that phrase is, like get into the person's head. I'm always trying to think, what do, th- what do they think? And, and I listen and try to take the, the, uh, the clues, meaning, you know what I hear a lot, Brett? I hear parents telling me that 
their son was scared to come to the gym. So I tried to look at how I post, you know, stuff on Instagram. Is it the gym name? What scares them? How do we talk to them these first two weeks to build them up to not feeling scared? So and that was the, the perfect analogy for that, yes. because you're spot on, is I would say it's like riding a bike. Like, you got to choose the right gear for the right hill. Yeah. You know, riding a bike. Like, I mountain biked. I started mountain biking for the first time in my life, like, really mountain biking in 2010. And I, I suck at it. But, you know, I never – I was always like, yeah, it's a good workout. And they're like, yeah, it's supposed to be. But it's also harder if you're not choosing the right gear for the right hill. Yes. You know, it's supposed to be about efficiency. And coaches aren't very good at that. You know, we, we're not good at, like, tailoring our messages. We can tailor our program, right? Like, you got a guy with a bad back. He might do a front squat or a goblet squat instead of the back squat um, if he needs to. But we don't tailor our communication. And that's really kind of what I'm trying to do with artofcoaching.com is – teach people how to periodize for people, so to speak, do you, whether that's in any population. Do you think that, you know, if, um, you know, I'm not sure how the athletes reach out to you. I know you're working with a lot of guys that are either in the pros or they're prepping for pro day. And I wonder if guys like myself, who are these independent strength coaches, if we have too much information on the website and gets people to read into it too much, or should it be, less information and kind of try to engage them to make the outreach to us. You know what I mean? Like second, I think it's got to engage is the key word there, right? Like we're in a, we're in a consumer phase of society right now where there's so much stuff out there. Like you're assuming people read it all. I mean, Zach, even on the like frequently asked questions, part of my site, you know, I have people asking those questions and you realize, Oh yeah. Like, you know what? They're just not reading it. Like you right. can go and they and a lot of times people are people are starved in our society for interaction mm -hmm. like legit interaction you know what i mean like you might get somebody that knows the answer to something that they want to ask you zach but they just want you to respond because they know that you're going to hit them up on the dm dude it's um so what's interesting is uh, a couple weeks ago you know a dad brought his son in and uh on the website it says don't sign up for this trial in very bold unless you're over 18, maybe it even says over 21. Um, and the kid signed, the dad told the kid, you sign up for it, you put your email into it. The dad's asking me about prices. And I said, well, did you read the website? Because the website no. explains the prices. He goes, nah, I told him to do everything. I go, that's interesting because it says, don't sign up. So yep. well, your son was on the website. So the father you know, bypassed everything. And you're right. People don't want to read. I think we're programmed to do this through Facebook yeah. and Instagram and people don't have the discipline. And in turn, they don't feel like they don't, they feel like they don't have the time to read and stop and, you know, take their time. So I try to get somebody who's showing up to my gym. They already know the price. They've seen the success stories of different athletes. Why? Because they always said, do you just train football players? Do you just train wrestlers? Well, our website has fencers, swimmers. The whole gamut. Soccer players, yes. So it tries to answer their, you know, the, the question that's running through their head. Um, let me ask you this question, Brad. I'm not sure what your timeline is, if you got to go. Here's the I, I got as long as it takes for my – I think my dog's trying to find a spot to go to the bathroom. So I'm good as long as you guys can bear with me moving real quick. So yes. You're like a long, okay. long twin. I'm always revolving around my dogs. <laughs> Got it. And it's a new place. So you know how it gets. Like they're, they're quote unquote, checking out the new place, which just means they want to find a place to piss. Um, but yeah, go ahead. I'm, I'm so listening. Here's the question. I've been hearing this since forever. Um, it is very rare for independent coaches like myself to yep. get any sort of relation built with the high school sport coaches. Now, I'm talking, you know, even guys that I'm friends with that coach, you know, or even, you know, good acquaintances with, they don't even bring the kids or try to develop any kind of relation. They still try to do it on their own. What advice would you give to that independent, that big independent population of strength coaches like myself? Is there a way to outreach to coaches or the booster club that you know of or that you've heard is great that could relate to the art of coaching, which is essentially the art of proper communication? Yeah, I think there is. I just think that the thing that people approach, I don't want to say wrong, but 
again, like we tend to just go at it with our agenda in mind. Like, you know, we have the answer or we have the right way or what have you. And that's fine. But again, you've got to like, I don't choose what I'm wearing that day until I know what the temperature is outside. You know what I mean? Like right now there's a huge storm going through it. Like it's, it's raining right here and it's 40 degrees. I'm not showing up tomorrow in shorts. So I think people sometimes they, they don't adjust their own barometer in terms of how they communicate to the environment. You know, they just go in and they think, Hey, I feel really passionate about this. So should you. And if you don't get it, you're wrong. And I think you can't approach it that way. You have to attune it by taking yourself out of the equation and sit back and say like, what is it you guys want? Like, what do we, what's the common goal here? What's the shared purpose? Cause everybody's always like, Oh, what's culture? Like culture is shared purpose, bottom line. And so if you're trying to do what's best and connect with these organizations and get them to do what's right for the kids, you've got to figure out what every single person in there's bottom line is or what the collective agenda is and go in there and speak to that. You know what I mean? And, and you have to learn their language. I think that's the number one thing. Again, you go to a different country. Yeah. We, we expect most people to speak English, which is pretty messed up, you know, but like, you know, the difference it makes if you just know one or two words of a different language, like somebody in that language will appreciate your making or in that, area will appreciate the effort so i say like treat it like travel like go somewhere speak the language you know the geography and try to cater to that environment you know and that's all you, you got to be a chameleon you know if you want to get a better um a better outcome does that make sense that answer yeah i still think that um there's going to be you know so many coaches have done what i've done meaning they send out an email to the sport coach you know and say Hey, Coach Brett B, uh, just wanted to introduce myself. My name's Zach Evanesh. I'm in your area. I'm a local strength and performance coach. If you need a hand or want to bring your guys out for a free workout and, and you'd like to see if I could help you in any way, please let me know. I think a lot of coaches are emailing, like what I would send an email like that, and it's really like a one in 30 response rate. <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't disagree with that for sure, you know. <laughs> Yeah, I think that I think that's spot on. And you know what, you're giving that you're giving that person a lot of credit for that email. That's a lot better than some of the emails I get. I get emails that say, yo, bro, can I get the course for free? Yo, bro, where you at? Want to train? Hit me. And I'm like, dude, like, who are you? I don't even know. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Or I'll get a yo coach. What do you think of back squats with a Z? And I'm like, what do you like want me to do with this information? You know? Sure. I think <laughs> that um, there's also the outside population outside of very serious strength coaches don't realize how much research and studying we do, Brett. So if I equate it to this, I was like, okay, since 1989, I started training. I don't think a day has gone by where I have not learned something new, not just from a book or a podcast or a video, but you know, I'm on vacation and I'm watching somebody and I'm looking at their feet. Okay, feet turned out, weak glutes. What would I do? Posture. You know, you're always thinking. And I say to myself, wow, we're studying, you know, like what doctors are studying. The human body is so complicated and we are um, upholding the, you know, like we're taking pride in what it takes to become great as a coach, right? And I, I feel okay about that. Um, let me ask you this last question. I don't want to keep you up. I'm so hey, fine. Look at just you got, you got to know what I, if you're a dog lover, you got to know what I'm dealing with. This is Tweedledee and Tweedledum <laughs> right here looking out into the abyss that is our backyard, trying to figure out if they want to chase something or go out in the rain, dude. So that's why, if anybody watching again, sorry for the weird angle. I'm in my back to watch these puffs. I need, I got to tell you, we have such a small backyard. This town I live in is this little beach town. The backyards in this town are so small. And uh, how big is your backyard? Do you know? I don't know. We just moved here. You know, my wife and I are from the Midwest, so we tried to find a place a bit north of Atlanta where we could get that kind of a home. You yeah. know, I've done, the, I did the LA thing where you're paying an ungodly amount for a shoe closet. And so, you know, we wanted to be somewhere where we can have a kid someday that can run around with the dogs and what have you. And, you know, we're not well off by any means. So you can find modest price housing out in a place like this. Yeah. So now these, these two rescues, because, we got a rescue pit bull and a rescue Vishla. Both of them had pretty bad backgrounds, were beaten and all that. They just want a place where they can run around, you know, so that was kind of our priority. I love it. You know, I'm a big dog guy, and um, I had a rescue pit that I actually rescued off the streets. Um, so when I have such a soft spot for pit bulls. So now I have 
I have a Doberman and we have a Maltese. So it's pretty crazy in my house with like the little one and the big one. But my Doberman, you know, I took her out three times today to the park. I always say like she would like CrossFit because she only wants to sprint until she's like sprawled and exhausted. <laughs> I love it. That's perfect. Okay, so what, was, what was the last question? Because I do want to answer that before I have to go. I Here's the question, Brett. Relating to the strong life, you just did a very big launch with the Art of Coaching. You just moved. You've, you know, really, you're doing a lot. What's something that you've learned about yourself through these, you know, there's probably been a lot of tough times with you're moving. You got, I think you got married like a year or two ago. You're doing a lot of stuff. So what have you learned about life um, that you'd like to share with people that, you know, through these kind of, you know, moving forward, pressing forward, finding a way to make it happen. What's a great life lesson you could share? <laughs> the thing that you preach again and again, like the key is persistence. I really do think it like, I mean, every time I come and I'll be driving in the car and I'll hate it because it's so trite. Like it's so trite to sit there, but like, I've just found like you either wear down life or it wears you down. And it's really both, you know, and that's okay. Like life is going to, you're not going to stop life from getting its shots in. But like, you've really got to hunker down during the worst times, find whatever your core values are and drive those. You know, I, tr I, I treat it very much like, you know, when you're squatting under heavy load and you're in that point where like, it feels like you might have to dump it, but if you just keep pressing, like you're going to get through like that, that's what the tough times feel like. And if you just keep holding your breath and pushing, like you'll get it. Make so I try to remind myself of that. I think what it, Ellen put it a lot more eloquently in, uh, in uh, what was that, that movie, uh, Finding Nemo, just keep swimming. You just got to keep swimming with that. Otherwise, it swallows you whole. And, yeah. you know, I think the other thing is you got to treat negativity like a virus, an absolute virus. Like people that, people that aren't interested in evolving, like just mentally or anything else, like you've got to get them out of your life, you know, because negativity – it's like a virus, and it makes those hard times even more difficult, for sure. Yeah, I want to give a quick book recommendation because of what you said. It's an old book, and you could find, like, the reprint on Amazon. It's by Orson Sweat Martin, and I think he was the original creator of Success Magazine, and the book is called An Iron Will. And basically, um, it's a real thin book. I think I've got it upstairs, but... Um, he talk. it's like, like he who does not advance, you know, gets conquered. So you must keep moving forward. And you just said you have to evolve. And I think if you don't evolve, negativity is in within your body because you're not moving forward. So if you, if you don't evolve, you'll erode. That was something yes. that I was always kind of like, that was told me at a really young age, either evolve or erode. And I was like, I love that. You know, if I don't have a tattoo, but if I did, that'd probably have that somewhere, you know. Cool. This has been great. So website again, Brett, is Art of Coaching? Or Artofcoaching.com, plain and simple. So uh, if you guys are interested, check it out, artofcoaching.com. You can just click click on my bio. I want your feedback. I want your debate. If you love it, hate it, whatever. We're going to do a lot of cool projects there going forward. Thanks for letting me crash your party, man. This wasn't planned. Yep. I wanted to just say hi to you, and I appreciate your work, and you know the respect I have for you. So great, man. I, I'm super pumped that you actually uh, hopped on. And uh, it's just inspiring. You know, when I came across your work, um, you, were, you were out west in Cali, and I was watching your, your videos. But what I, it wasn't just the videos you were posting, but you were writing about things like just attacking the basics, being consistent. I was like, all right, first of all, I watch your training and your coaching. And I was like, this guy's on fire. Like, he, he's got his shit together. He, he knows what he's doing. And he's not trying to sell anybody on a fat or gimmick. You're like, man, kill these basics, attack them. And I was, and I was like, oh, thank God. Like, you know, you were, you're an expert and you weren't trying to sell me a trick. You weren't selling anybody a trick. And to me, I was like, it was refreshing. It was really thank you. refreshing. Appreciate that's, that. that's what it was. It was refreshing and inspiring to me. And I love seeing your garage. So um, I guess you're going to set up a new garage gym. Yeah, I got a long way to go to catch yours. I, you know, I remember like 2009, I'd watch your videos. I'd be like, God, like he's got this, like all, everything just looks so medieval and awesome. <laughs> you know? like, and so I love, I said, if I, if, even if I was like, if I was a billionaire today, I'd still open up a place that was just kind of felt a little medieval. I always say if Batman wouldn't train there, it's not my kind of place. Oh, you know? wow. so 
Yeah, so it's like the Batman gym blended with um, the gym in Rocky Three when they had to go back to like uh, South Central LA with Apollo, and then yep. oh, and then the barn and the barn in Rocky Four. No, if I if I have my way, man, in twenty years. I'll just own a plot of land yes. with a shed that's about 2,500 square foot yes. with a boxing ring and some weights in it. And I'll send about, you know, like I'll, I'll say, hey, you know what? We can have 50 to 100 people a year that are going to come out and train, invite yeah. only. Got to be work hard. Other than that, I'm going to be a recluse and you ain't going to see me. Uh, I'm with you. Hey, we got a real good testimonial down there. Uh, Matias says, Art of Coaching, fantastic tool for all the coaches. Thank, Thank you sharing your work. Brett, it's, it's very, very hard. You travel a lot. You're super busy to, to do the course, to create the course. And uh, I think, you know, a, a word to other coaches out there, don't be afraid to share your work, what you believe in. I'm sure you met a lot of resistance uh, in the world. That's what anybody does who's going to make a dent. You know, you're not going to have, not everybody's going to love you or be your fan and I, I you know i was watching some youtube videos today and i was like why does this video have thumbs down these people are sharing great information there's people out there that don't care they they're gonna hate on you no matter what and i think what's important is like brett you do a great job you you obviously speak from your heart but it takes guts and balls to move forward and put something out that you believe in that you believe is going to change the world and uh, I think more coaches out there, don't be afraid to take a stand for what you believe in and, uh, and, and put, some, put some work out there. Put some of your stuff out there because I always say the minimum effective dose of a great strength coach is you're changing lives. If you ain't changing okay. lives, then you got to get better at it. You got to push forward. So um, I love what you're doing, man. Much respect. And uh, artofcoaching.com, I'm so pumped you uh, hopped on like this unplanned. I love it. Thank you. Thanks for accepting me, man. I appreciate it. I'll talk to you soon. Take right. care. Bye, Thanks, everybody. See you later, Brett. Bye. Bye. All right, guys. Oh, man, that was awesome. I hope everybody loved that. That was, like, totally off the cuff, Brett doing that. Uh, artofcoaching.com. I love what that guy's doing. Um, guys, more than anything, I feel like I'm at my best as a strength coach. But what uh, I feel is I'm learning more and more how to communicate better with parents and athletes and other coaches. Um, I'm at my second Division One university. Things I would say to kids today, I probably wouldn't have been doing it a year, two, or three years ago. We got to keep evolving, getting better. I hope I could pull the audio and video from this and get it up on my um, Strong Life podcast. Much respect, guys. Talk to you guys later. If you got questions, Feel free to message me on Instagram, and then I create a live video to answer your question. Peace out, guys. Later.